Hey everybody, welcome back to the Joe Rockstar channel, brought to you by the generosity of viewers like you. In today's video, we'll be on the bike at the first race of the season. We'll look at the challenges of single track, tough terrain, and the scoring snafu that almost made my efforts to improve seem futile. It's round one of the 2018 AMRA and AMA Arizona Off-Road State Championship Series, and we're off to a rocky start. Literally. <laughs> The Sheridan Mountain Showdown went down at Camp Wood, which is northeast of the town of Prescott, Arizona, and has always been considered the most technical and physically demanding race of the series. Arizona Trail Riders, the club that organized this event, did their best to maintain that reputation. Never mind the press releases leading up to the race that assured us that the sea course would be less technical, faster, and more flowy than last year. This was either intentional disinformation or hyperbole meant to lull us into a sense of false confidence. This was a tough course, and I have to tip my hat to all the men and women who had the courage to face it. To the rest of the field, finisher or not, first place or last place, they deserve the respect of riders and non-riders alike. This race is not for the faint of heart. The potential for serious injury and damage to the bike is very real. I saw a rider with duct tape where his oil cap should have been. Another broke his entire clutch perch off the bike in the middle of a gnarly hill climb. One club member had his tires shredded by sharp rocks, and we lost another club member to broken ribs, and another one to dehydration and heat exhaustion. What sets Camp Wood apart from other race venues are the narrow trails. Thank you! The varying degrees of near vertical climbs and the rocky obstacles that litter almost every mile of the course. Combine those three aspects and you have the perfect recipe for novice rider carnage. Now it's no surprise that following each monsoon season in Arizona, mountains like this one are pounded with heavy rains that wash away topsoil from the trails, exposing rocks that jet out from all sorts of precarious angles. Rocks threaten to kick your front wheel offline and dent the heck out of your rims. And if you try to sneak in a break and sit while you ride, you're just asking for one of these baby heads to send you flying over the bars to get a mouthful of dirt, and later, a mouthful of ibuprofen. Narrow trails leave little room for mistakes, and even less room for passing slower riders and victims of Camp Wood's punishing rocky climbs and obstacles. Now I can probably take this guy that's in front of me, but there's nowhere for him to go. So I'm just taking it easy for now. Fortunately this year, I'm off to a good start avoiding being a victim of the course. You guys have a good race, man. Stay safe. I hope this one's short like last year. I got a pee. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Still, a little slow in a lot of sections, but you have to keep things in perspective. It's easy to look at this video and say, faster. But the reality when you're on the bike is sober. While I'm not ripping it up like a pro, I am showing a huge improvement over last year. I passed a lot of riders during this race, while only getting past myself a few times when recovering from letdowns. I had very few get-offs this race compared to last season, and when I did, I was back on the bike quickly, regaining ground I lost to other riders, 
and furthering the gap between those riders that were behind me. Now the format for this race is called the Qualifier Enduro. The racers are timed in sections called tests. Each rider starts 15 seconds apart and races against the clock. At the end of each test, the rider rides to the next test and starts the next test when they're ready. 100 feet, transfer. 100 feet. Come on, break. All right, so the way this work, race works is you're timed in, the, in what they call a test section, and then you get to a spot like I just did and check in, and you enter what's called the transfer section, which might be, this one's really short, obviously, but so others might be really long, and you have a lot of time to get there, and you're not racing until you start the next test. Whew, it's good. After all the tests have been completed, the amount of time used in each test section is added together to compute your total time for the race. Obviously the rider with the shortest time is the winner. This has to be my favorite format as you get to rest and recharge after every section, and that makes up for the difficulty of the terrain. How long can we break for? Oh nice. While the A and B class has faced a hard 80 miles of total riding, the novice class had it relatively easy at about 35 miles. In fact, for us, test one was around eight miles, test two was about four miles, test three was about six, and the final test was only two and a half miles. The remaining miles were all non-time transfer riding between test sections. Now with four hours to complete all of those miles, there was plenty of time between the tests to take a break, check the bike, and make any adjustments or repairs. Too bad I lost my extra battery. There were plenty of opportunities to change it without interfering with my race times. Passing in this race was difficult. There is always the danger that if you get too close, you might make the rider in front of you nervous. If they go down in the trail, you might go down with them. On top of that, when a rider is down on an obstacle blocking the best line over it, you have to weigh the risk of making the pass using a sketchy line or waiting. One poor decision can put you on the ground right there with them, and that's guaranteed to hurt your time. Or you can wait patiently and lose time anyway. Either way, it's a gamble, but you have to take a shot on which decision is going to cost you the least. What would you do? Well, sometimes I go for it and win. Sometimes I go for it and lose. And sometimes discretion is the better part of valor. And in situations like these, you can at least rest, recharge, and maybe even vent some frustration. Ah, boo! Like a curmudgeon, I shook my fists and yelled. I was not yelling at anyone in particular, I just felt like the race was slipping away from me as I was stuck here for about four minutes. Frustration got the better of me. To the riders in front of me, I apologize. So I decided to laugh it off and keep a positive attitude. Sometimes it's a surprise even to yourself that you didn't crash. And then for no apparent reason, you do.
But the biggest killer in these races so far is not the rocks or the narrow trails. It isn't the nasty hill climbs or the gnarly terrain. It is fatigue. Fatigue is the real obstacle. Well, that in your own head. first time I finished the race and was actually feeling good. Sure, I was tired, but I wasn't dead tired. If I had to, I think I could have done another test section. I'm not quite ready for the big leagues, but certainly better off than last year. And I was sure it was going to show in the results. I was sure I made the top 10, maybe even the top 5. But it didn't. The results were released on Tuesday and showed me in 12th place. 12th? How? I was completely floored to find that my time in test 3 was twice as long as most of the other riders. While my scorecard indicated I took an hour starting that test at 11.35 and finishing at 12.35, almost all the other racers finished it under 40 minutes, with the majority around 30 minutes. It made no sense. I was competitive in the other three tests. What happened here? I tried, but I could not remember any long periods of sitting idle after a letdown. Sure, I went down a couple times in test three, but in every case I was back up and moving within a minute or two. Nothing that could account for such a huge gap. Fortunately, Mike Tucson of the Desert Enduro YouTube channel remembered finishing the third test after me, and his scorecard told a different tale. I was right. There was no way I took more than 35 minutes to complete the third test session. Mike crossed the finish of test three at 12.08 and found me already waiting there almost 30 minutes earlier than my scorecard shows. In fact, I was taking a break and preparing to ride to the next test. Instead of getting my cod piece in a bunch, I sent a polite email to the race organizers requesting that they review my score, and by Thursday the results had been fixed. I've been moved up to ninth place, still out of the top five, but I can't focus on that. The next race is only two weeks away, and I have to get the bike and myself ready. I believe that I cannot be ambiguous about my goals. I expect to win the next round, I just have to ride faster. Wish me luck, and I'll see you there. Thanks for watching. A new season is here, and Amra and the AMA have teamed up to create the first ever Arizona Off-Road State Championship, and I'm hoping to participate in every race, but I can't do it without your support. Now in this video I want to recognize the first four Patreons that have earned a spot on my bike. They supported me all season last year and have continued to provide their support to help keep the videos on the Joe Rockstar channel coming and to keep me in the races.
Now I have no desire to decorate my bike with the names of companies that are popular in the industry. Instead, I choose to decorate my bike with the names of those who support me. If you're interested in earning a spot on my bike, please go to my Patreon page. Pledge your support. Pledge as little as a dollar a month, as every little bit will help keep me racing.